What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. So, if you guys can believe it, it is actually our midway period in between Beta 2 and when we anticipate Beta 3 to come out for iOS 18. And a lot of questions have been getting flown around as far as should you install these developer betas on your primary device? How's the stability? What's it doing to battery life? Is it completely wrecking battery health? Is it worth it in the first place? There are a ton of questions and comments on some of our videos, and I wanna just go ahead and address some of this right now. So first things first, overarching theme is, do you see value in currently what is in the betas to risk installing on some of your primary devices? We always wanna try out the newest things first. You wanna be the first on board, an early adapter, so to speak. Sometimes it doesn't make sense, other times it does. Apple now has historically been so inconsistent with these betas, it is very, very hard to assume what you're getting right from Jump Street. Having said that, what they have been consistent about is being consistently inconsistent. Beta 1 has been traditionally and historically one of the best betas. Beta 2 and 3 have kind of tanked that a little bit, specifically around battery life, and we're already seeing that as far as stability in Beta 2 in the week we've had it. Now, what's very interesting and in getting this right out of the way is beta three should be coming out in about another week around July 8th, uh, which will put us in that two week period from breaks between betas. And we could have either our first public beta, cause historically, again, that is usually when we get that in July of the following year. And also Apple intelligence and some other features we'll talk about here in a second. Let's dive in and take a look at the iPhone while we go through some of these features and you guys make up your decision. Is it worth upgrading? Comment down below, let us know. Did you install it on your primary device? Let's go. So if you guys don't follow along, we have had iOS 18 beta one or two installed ever since it was announced and released, which puts us at, you know, about three weeks or so using this. And the first call out is exactly like we said all along, beta one was very stable, but beta two introduced a ton of bugs. A lot of them you've probably heard of and seen around here is when you customize your icons and themings, uh, for some reason, even if you tint them, sometimes these icons would not unfortunately go back to, uh, to back to the actual icon. It would show just kind of like a white grouping. Um, unfortunately, the only way to kind of get rid of that is to kind of go back in here, edit, customize, use large icons, and then go back to small, and it would kind of reset it or restarting your phone. We did a whole video in regards to that already, so I don't want to lean on that too much, but that was one of the more common known issues in beta 2. As you can see, we have an issue with the music widget right here. It hasn't repopulated everything. That's a new one that we actually are just now seeing for the first time. But again, these are some minimal issues. One of the biggest one is kind of what we talked about before. If you go into settings, general, oops, excuse me, settings, battery, and go into battery health, this beta unsurprisingly has significantly destroyed our maximum capacity and our battery health. It's not surprising in a beta standpoint that it's doing this, but it has significantly dropped about a percent per week since we were on this beta. It's something we always look at. Our cycle counts aren't drastically increasing. It is purely the, uh, the beta turning this phone into a hot oven, uh, so to speak. Whether we're outside, inside, rarely using it, heavily using it, it seems to always want to be just burning up on fire. This could be a significant issue if you use your phone and keep it for a number of years, your capacity and your battery health is going to unfortunately tank. So having said that, the battery has st uh, stabilized somewhat itself getting through about a day of usage, but still there could be other improvements that we would like to see from time to time there. One of the great new additions here is actually this under your IMS status. RCS is now on the iPhone as they told us and to see if you have it you can just click on your IMS status and just tap it like I did to show your actual carrier band 
and it now shows voice, SMS, and RCS being enabled. You can see these in your text messaging. I actually posted this over on X a couple of weeks ago, or about a week ago, I'm sorry, explaining that RCS is active and what that looks like, getting green bubble delivery alerts, notifications on uh, red messaging, and all of that, typing notifications, it's all there like you would intend it to be. So again, got to weigh out pros and cons, what's more important to you there. Beta 3, that should be coming out in about a week or so, like we were talking about, around the 8th here. That should be our first public beta as well. Again, if history is anything to go by, that would be very nice, and it could introduce a number of already discussed new features like call recording, Apple intelligence, uh, image playground. These are all things that Apple really discussed recently, so it's going to be very interesting to see what is actually included in beta 3. I have some caution here being too excited that Apple intelligence will be here. They did say summer would be the first to be deployed. I find it hard to believe they would do that in a public beta as well as a developer beta, just trying to gauge where everything's coming from. But from another standpoint, two weeks from our last beta would be July 8th. And historically, this could be when we get those items. It'll be a very interesting to see. So aside from that, you obviously have your changes to text messaging and kind of, like we said, RCS to reactions. Messaging got a big overhaul. We know the Photos app has a significantly new look here as well. Um, a lot of people are torn between do they like it, do they not like it. That's another thing to consider. I don't know if it's going to stick in the ultimate iOS 18 release when it's finally public. Uh, a lot of people seem to think they might roll that back, but just another thought to consider as well. Aside from that, guys, as you can tell, we like it. We're still using it. I think beta 3 should have some more improvements, hopefully, uh, specifically around the overheating issue that we're experiencing and the battery health degradation that we're getting. I'm very curious to know, though, comment down below. Are you guys going to be picking it up? Do you see any benefit in getting a beta on your primary device? Again, at the end of the day, it is a beta, and even Apple does not encourage you to add it on your daily driver. It's meant for development devices, but we know how it is. Everyone wants a new thing at the same time and wants to be able to use it as soon as new features are released, especially in massive updates that are annual like new OS versioning themselves. I think we're going to keep it on our primary device. I don't see us changing it at all. Again, from a fluidity standpoint and going into all your apps and jumping around, everything is quick and stable. As you can see, we've had no real issues uh, going into any of this. And you can see just how smooth it is. So, yeah. Let us know down below what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching, guys. We will catch you in the next one. Peace.